So here's a little workthrough of the um, quantitative chemistry questions you've just been sent. Um, obviously you have a go at them first before you look at this video, but hopefully with this you can check you've got the correct working out and the correct answers. So the first two questions are limiting reacting questions, and these are quite standard ones. And my understanding of the standard ones is that within the equation, it's all one-to-one -one ratios, which makes things a little bit more easy for you. Obviously on the right hand side of the page, you've got a trick example we'll come to later. Both these standard ones, We'll just use the table method because that's the easiest way to cope with them. Again, looking at the information in the question, um, the thing that sets us apart as being a side trick your limiting reacting question is the fact that you've got masses given for both of your reactants, 10 grams calcium oxide, 10 grams of water. So that tells us it's a side trick your style of reacting mass question. But starting with the table method, again, we just give everything in the equation its own little column. And we fill in what we know. So ratio first, it's a one to one to one ratio. It makes it a little bit easier for us. The masses we've been given, we've been given 10 grams of calcium oxide, 10 grams of water. And we're trying to find out the mass of calcium hydroxide found from this. So my first step is to work out the moles of both of my reactants because I need to compare them to each other. The RFM of calcium oxide is just looking at your mass numbers in the periodic table, 40 plus 16 is 56. And I find out my moles by doing mass divided by RFM, 10 over 56 is 0.179 moles. Same thing with water, 10 grams fit, its RFM is 1 plus 1 plus 16 for H2O, and which gives you an RFM of 18. Moles is 10, the mass divided by the RFM 18, which gives you 0.556 moles. Now for the tricky step of any limiting re reacting question, I have to pick the correct one of these moles to use to work out the moles of the product. It's a little bit more straightforward with the one-to-one -one ratio. I can just pick the smaller one as being the limiting reactant. So if I compare two numbers here, 0.179 moles of calcium oxide, 0.556 moles of H2O. Because one of this reacts with one of this, um, I can just pick the smaller one as, re as running out first. So I'll have H2 left over. It's going to be the excess reactant and the calcium oxide will run out first it's going to be the limiting reactant and the rule is that the limiting reactant is the one that determines how much product you make so i use my ratio with this number of moles for the limiting reactant i now ignore the excess reactant it's now a one-to-one -one ratio for calcium oxide to calcium hydroxide. So if it's a one-to-one -one ratio, the moles will be the same. 0.179 moles of calcium oxide will make 0.17 moles of calcium hydroxide. I just need to turn back into mass, which involves using the equation mass equals moles times RFM. The RFM of calcium hydroxide is 40 plus 16 plus 1 twice, which is 74. Times in those two numbers together gives you a final answer of 13.2 grams. Question two, very similar. Um, you've got two masses given the question, one gram of magnesium, five grams of bromine, you're making magnesium bromide. So let's give it its table. Ratio first, again, this is a nice kind of simple one. It's a one to one to one ratio. The masses given to me are one gram of magnesium and five grams of bromine. The mass I'm trying to get is the mass of magnesium bromide. So this is my missing part of the table I'm trying to calculate. So starting point is I need to work out moles of both. So moles equals mass divided by RFM. RFM magnesium, simple enough to solve periodic table, is 24 gives you moles of 0.0417. For bromine, it's five. Now I have to be careful here. There's two bromines in that formula because that's a small two. So the RFM is actually 160 in that case. Giving you a number of moles of 0.03125. Again, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio for one magnesium it reacts with one bromine molecule, I can just look and pick the smaller one to be the limiting reactant. And in this case, that will be the bromine, it's 0.03 versus 0.04. So this is limiting, and the magnesium is an excess. So again, like before, 
I can ignore my excess reactant because it's going to be left over. Not all of this is reacting. But this is fully reacting and then the reaction stops. So this controls how much product I make. So number of moles 0.03 on T5. It's a one to one ratio for bromine to magnesium bromide. So the moles will be the same for both. I then need to convert that back into mass, so I need to use the equation mass equals moles times RFM. I need to work out the RFM of magnesium bromide. That's 24 plus 80 plus 80, which is 184. 184 times 0.3125 gives you a final answer of 5.75 grams. Moving on to the next side, so this is on the right hand side of your handout. Um, Still the same type of calculation, but I've said this is a trickier example. The key thing that's probably being trickier is that the ratio is not all one to one to one. It's a two to one ratio of your reactants. But again, the information given is still pretty much the same. Um, you're given 16.8 grams of this reactant, sodium hydrogen carbonate, six grams of magnesium sulfate. This is a little bit more structured. It asks you to work out the limiting reactant first, and then work out the mass of the, of the sodium sulfate at the end. Um, so it's a little bit more broken up. But if you think about it, so like if we're familiar with the table method, I'm going to keep using that. So two sodium hydrogen carbonates and magnesium sulfate react together to make a sodium sulfate, magnesium hydroxide, and two carbon dioxides. So let's fill in what I've got from the question. Well, ratio first, I can work that out. So it's a two, using the balance of numbers to one, to one, to one, to two ratio. The mass given to me, 16.8 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate, 6.0 grams of magnesium sulfate. Now, if I look at what I'm trying to actually calculate, calculate the maximum mass of sodium sulfate obtained, so which is this one, sodium sulfate. So the final two columns don't actually matter in this case. I'm not asked to work out anything about them. So the first thing the question wants me to do is work out limiting, which is what I would be doing anyway. And the way I work out limiting in this case is like before, convert all the masses to moles and then see what I can work out, work out from that. So moles equals mass over RFM. I need to work out the RFM of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Again, ignore the big two because it's just for balancing. It's not part of the formula. So 23 plus a 1 plus a 12 plus 3 sixteens. And it gives me 84. 16 moniate over 84 is 0.2 moles. Same thing for magnesium sulfate. So we need to work out RFM to work out the moles. Um, 24 plus 32 plus 4 sixteens is actually 120. So 6 by 120 is 0.05 moles. Now this is the hard part of this trickier example. I need to be careful when working out the limiting reactant because they don't react with each other to two reactants in a one to one ratio. So the proper way to do this is to pick one of them and do a wee thought experiment with it. So I'm going to pick um, this left-hand reactant. So what I'm thinking is, if this amount of sodium hydrogen carbonate, not 0.2 moles of it, fully reacted with the magnesium sulfate, how much of the magnesium sulfate would I need? So I'm going to ignore for the time being the fact I've got this amount of it. I just want to see how much I need to fully react that. Using a 2 to 1 ratio, um, two of this reacts with one of this, so this would react with, hypothetically, half of that amount of magnesium sulfate, in other words, 0 0.1 moles of it. Once I've worked out what I need to fully react that, I look at what I have, I actually only have 0 0.05 moles of this. In other words, I don't have enough magnesium sulfate to fully get rid of or fully react with 0.2 moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate, I would actually need 0.1 moles of it. Because I don't have enough magnesium sulfate for the reaction, we would call it the limiting reactant. And this the excess reactant. So that's the proper way of working, on, working it out. You could do the same thought process for this one, um, looking towards the sodium hydrogen carbonate, but you'll need to do it once. A little exam tip though, if in doubt, just pick the smaller one. A lot of cases that will still be true and you still get the marks. If you get it wrong by guessing, you only lose one mark out of the five. So if you get stuck in that bit, just pick the smaller one. But the correct answer for this one, lemon reactant is magnesium sulfate. So you've got three marks of the five up to there. 
Once you've worked out that is the limiting reactant, I need to use that limiting reactant for the rest of the question. That limiting reactant, so ignore excess now, we will use to work out the moles of the product. Check my ratio, 1 to 1, so it will be the same number of moles of this product, the sodium sulfate. Need to turn it back into mass, I need to times it by to RFM. 2 sodiums, 2 23s, 32 for the sulfur, 4 16s for the oxygen, gives you an RFM of 142. 0.05 times 142 give you a final answer of 7.1 grams, which goes down here. Um, obviously, you don't actually need to use both parts of the working out. If you do, if all you're working out up here is absolutely fine. And the final question on this wee um, exercise is percentage yield. So that's the last bit we looked at in the notes. So as I said at the time, most of the time you get percentage yield, it's on the end of a longer mole question. So this one has a standard, this isn't limiting reactants, it's a normal question. Five mark reacting mass question, reacting mass question. Then a little two mark calculation on the end about percentage yield. So we'll do the whole thing start to finish. First part, what's the maximum mass of magnesium sulfate could be formed? when 2.1 grams of magnesium carbonate are reacted with sulfuric acid. So I'm going to draw my table. And let's look at the question half for me. So do the ratio first. This is quite a nice one. It's all a one to one to one to one ratio. The mass in the question, it's only one mass because it's not limiting reactant. It's back to being a normal question. 2.1 grams of magnesium carbonate. So I can go in there. What I've been asked to work out is the maximum mass of magnesium sulfate I'm going to form. So that's actually this bit here I'm looking to calculate. And that therefore means that all the other columns are not actually needed in this question. So my normal working out, I need to work out the moles first. It involves dividing mass by the RFM. The RFM of magnesium carbonate is 24 plus 12 plus 3 sixteens, which is 84. So I do 2.1 over 84 to give me a number of moles of 0.025. I then look at my ratio to get the moles of the reactant to the moles of the product. It's a simple one-to-one -one ratio, so the number of moles will be the same in both cases. But I need to convert that back into a mass, which involves timesing it by the RFM. RFM magnesium sulfate is 24 plus 32 plus 4 sixteens, which it adds up to 120. So I do 0 0.025 times by the RFM 120 to give me a final answer of 3 grams exactly. This is how they extend it on the percentage yield question. They tell you about a student actually carried out this experiment and only obtained 1.8 grams of magnesium sulfate. Calculate the percentage yield. So my little formula uses percentage yield equals the actual yield over the theoretical yield times by 100. Just need to be careful to pick the correct yield for each part. The actual yield is the one you actually get in an experiment, which is clearly this part. The student carried out that experiment and obtained 1.8. The theoretical yield is the one you say you should make according to your calculation. Our calculation told us that we should have got 3 grams. So the fraction becomes 1.8 over 3 times by 100, which gives you 60%. The final part of the question is a little one mark theory question. Suggest a reason why the percentage yield is not 100% in this reaction, as it will be in most reactions. Again, you've got a few um, examples in your notes. Um, I mean, it's quite open. You could talk about side reactions. You could talk about the reaction is not complete. You could talk about loss of product when you're transferring it. So that means when you're moving it from the flask to the balance to weigh it. Um, those are the main ones in your notes. The ones the Marsh scheme has as well. Um, Loss due to fizzing, some of the reacting could fizz out when CO2 is being used. Loss when you're filtering it, not measuring it correctly as well, um, or the reaction not completing as we've got.